simultaneous heating and cooling. I'm going to give you a little scenario here where I'm going to have, let's say, 15 kilowatts of cooling and 5 kilowatts of heating. So in that situation, the outdoor unit is doing majority cooling. So what we're going to do there, the refrigerant is going to go from the compressor, it's going to go up to that reversing valve, and then we're going to send some of the refrigerant through the outdoor coil, and I'm going to take it from being a vapour to being a liquid. As we do so, that's acting as a condenser. And then I'm going to bypass some of that refrigerant as well. So some of the refrigerant is not going to go through that coil. So that's going to carry on being a nice superheated vapour. And I'm going to bring them both together and send them down the same bit of pipework to the VC box. So I've got this mix of gas and liquid passing down this bit of pipework. And it's going to stay the same until it gets to this gas-liquid separator. Because what's going to happen there is you've got an enlarged bit of copper, you've got a slight pressure drop, at which point the liquid's going to go to the bottom and the vapour is going to go to the top. So I'm going to draw off my 5 kilowatts of vapour off the top of that gas-liquid separator. So let's say I'm opening up this port here. I send that refrigerant through the indoor unit. It goes from being a vapour to being a liquid as we do heating. So that 5 kilowatts of heating done. I've then got 5 kilowatts of liquid coming back, but it's not sub-cooled. I want to do that for efficiency purposes. I take that from that side and I put it into my tube and tube heat exchanger. And I sub-cool it. The only problem is I've only got 5 kilowatts of sub-cooled liquid and I needed 15. So what we do is I open up LEV1 and what LEV1 will do it will allow me to draw off the additional 10 kilowatts of liquid refrigerant off the bottom of that gas liquid separator and introduce that into the tube and tube heat exchanger. I can subcool it as well. I've now got my 15 kilowatts of subcooled liquid. I can send it off from there, off to the indoor units that need cooling. As it passes through the indoor units, it's going to go through the expansion device, got a big pressure drop, it's going to start boiling off at, say, around about zero degrees evaporating temperature. On basis, the indoor units are all working fine got nice clean filters and things like that. It's all going to come back being a vapour on that return leg, send it back off to the outdoor unit, back to the accumulator, back into the compressor and we start all over again.